If you have heard about Airbnb, you've heard of the bad news. It's all over the place. And the reason why is hotels want you to know that Airbnbs are bad. And the reason why is because they've been passing bans. Hotels use bad news and lobbyists to pass bans on Airbnb. They even have claimed that passing bans and restrictions on Airbnb is going to be good for the housing market. That is going to be better for families, making homes more affordable. Welcome back, YouTube world. My name is Sean Rakijic. I've been an Airbnb host for over nine years, and I've seen it all. All of the bad news, from the gunshots, to the crime, to the theft, to parties, everything. But I can tell you at scale, there's way more to the story. Let me ask you, have you ever seen in the news that there's been a fight or a party or drug use at a Hilton or a Marriott? No, but it happens all of the time. The only reason why we see Airbnb news is because someone is pushing that news for an agenda. And I want to show you the real data on what actually happens to communities and travel when Airbnb is banned. Because one year ago, almost to the day, New York finally cracked down and banned Airbnb completely, removing masses and masses of listings from New York City. And no, I'm not in New York City, as you can tell, far from it actually. I'm on the West Coast in Lake of the Woods, Oregon, just finished two weeks at Burning Man with my trusty bus, and I'm traveling the West Coast for a while. And there's actually another story here on the West Coast that I'd like to start with before we get to New York City. Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada, is the second largest city in British Columbia outside of Vancouver. And ever since they banned Airbnbs, Hotel prices have skyrocketed. The housing market hasn't corrected and homes haven't become remarkably more affordable, but hotel prices have jumped, quadrupled in some cases. And when we look at Kelowna as a prime example of why hotels are lobbying against Airbnb, we can see where the money is. Hotels have had to drop their prices because the presence of Airbnbs affects supply and demand. People can choose to opt for an Airbnb instead of a hotel. This seems obvious, doesn't it? But it goes even deeper than that. Airbnbs supply a type of property that often hotels cannot provide. There's no way that hotels can adapt or adjust to out-deliver value against an Airbnb property because families want the space. Families want the privacy. Families want the square footage. On average, even if you booked a studio apartment on Airbnb, you're going to get 600 square feet or more. And a hotel room is 250 square feet on average, meaning that for the same dollars spent, you'll often get twice as much square footage and a full kitchen, full size fridge, all these other amenities that allow you not to spend hand over fist at restaurants. And families who are budget concerned would even spend a little bit more money on a property like a studio apartment or even a house if that meant that they can cook their own dinner with their family and not have to spend all of this crazy money patronizing hotels and restaurants and bars wherever it is that they're traveling. Hotels make their money on the back end with charging you for parking and charging you for room service and charging you crazy amounts of money for avocado toast. And because hotels have this type of business model, they can't reverse it. Aside from people like Marriott who've started Marriott Homes and Villas, a platform where you can book homes with Marriott Bonvoy points. They're doing this because they would like to maintain a positive association with travel no matter what a person needs. If you booked a home through Marriott, you'd also book hotels through Marriott when they're applicable. But if you always book Airbnb properties, then when it comes time to book a hotel, you don't have the first of mind relationship that Marriott wants you to have. They did the right and smart thing by creating their own platform where their current base of hotel users could also find a home. Instead of leaving Marriott to go to Airbnb or Verbo, they can stay on Marriott and get a home. Marriott doing this is a recognition of the fact that hotels cannot compete against a completely different type of product. Hotels know that Airbnbs and Verbo properties just have something that they'll never be able to beat. And so instead of throwing millions of dollars into buying properties or renting properties and taking that risk, they've just decided to try to legislate them away. And New York City is the same way. Homes, condos, apartments, they haven't gone down in price, but hotel prices have skyrocketed in the year that Airbnb has been gone from New York City. So let's get into the data. I had to go back to my bus and dig it up with my Starlink to find you these charts. And I pasted into these charts the date that Airbnb moratoriums went into effect, if we can call them that. And as you can see in these two charts that in Kelowna, British Columbia, and in New York City, that Airbnb getting banned had no effect on the housing market. And what's more, the other side of this, in Vancouver area, British Columbia, hotel prices surged over 44% the summer that Airbnb was banned. The following year, it increased another 9%. They recorded record high average hotel prices, prices never recorded ever before in the Canadian city. So banning Airbnb in British Columbia did nothing for the housing market, but did everything for hotel profits. 
Now if you want to travel to Canada, you better be rich. That same 9% increase applies to New York City over the last calendar year, and even online through ChatGPT, it claims that the reason why is because the banning of short-term rentals led to this increase of hotel prices. So rent prices went down by about a percent following the ban, but have since recovered. Hotel prices have gone up 9%, and home prices for sales are still skyrocketing. So next time you hear someone say that banning Airbnb is going to be good for the housing market, unless they are in Sedona, Arizona, that's most likely not true. Let's get back to the video. And when hotel prices increase from places like Clowna to New York City to Toronto to New Orleans, anywhere where they've tried to restrict that inventory and drive up prices with hotel rooms, it becomes travel restrictive. Most hotels are in a position to not care about the damage that they're doing to local travel. They have a finite amount of supply. They want to make sure that that finite amount of supply is getting filled. They don't care that there's more local businesses, restaurants, tour guides, tourist attractions, uh, other tour support, tour, tourist service industries. They don't care that all of this has been built around the fact that more travel is possible. When they kill Airbnb and Verbo in any city, they're cutting away 10 to 20% of all transient supply or more in some cases. And by doing so, they're forcing anybody who wants to stay in New Orleans or anywhere else to flood into those hotel rooms and fill those rooms up. At the point that they're at capacity, they don't care that other people can't stay. So when they drive up prices, out of that surplus of people, the people who want to stay there more will pay more money and then stay at a higher rate. This deflation of travel spend will be overall net negative for any city that they do this. But it's going to be positive for the Hyatt because they got their doors filled. They don't care about local businesses. They don't care about the city. They only care about their own bottom line. I'm sure you stayed in a hotel that was overpriced and you stayed there because you had to. I want you to imagine the average family that doesn't have a lot of money to spend in an environment like our economy that's not stable where they can't afford to spend an extra $200 a night on a hotel because demand spikes. Spikes just a little bit, but there's no supply to absorb it, so then they're stuck paying an extra $200 a night. Imagine those families. They will just not travel. They'll not get the vacation that they've always wanted. The kids aren't going to get experiences that they could have with their family. We're going to have uncultured, ignorant, more uncultured and more ignorant people than we've ever had before in America. And in the United States of Walmart, it's already really bad. If we want to keep going down this path of ignorance and overspending, then yes, support hotels as they try to ban Airbnb. But if you want more family businesses, more small business owners that can teach their kids how to be an Airbnb host, that can teach their kids to be self-sufficient, um, teach their kids to be in a hospitality industry, or just travel to places like this and expose them to parts of the world that they've never been to before, then support short-term rentals. Because banning short-term rentals has not helped. And if you disagree, put it in the comments. If you agree and have a story to share, please, please put it in the comments. I'm going to be moving on from Lake of the Woods here. I'm going to be going north towards Portland, and I'm going to be hiking some trails with some immensely beautiful waterfalls. So if you want to see the bus travel the world a little bit, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, my friends, I will see you on the other side.